Well, hello, xenographers everywhere, and welcome to another episode. It's winter, at least it is in the UK, bringing grey skies and washed out colours. So it's a good time to forget about colour completely and do some black and white photography. I've used four main lenses to make this week's images from Olympus, Jupiter and Fed, and I've shot on both film and digital. Black and white images emphasise the formal visual elements, light, texture, form, line and composition. For me, it's a purer, more essential experience and mastering it can make you a better photographer. So, let's look at our first lens, camera and film combination. The Olympus OM2, the Zuiko 50mm f1.4 and some expired Ilford FP4. This is one of my favourite lenses. It's got great contrast, beautiful background blur, and it's pretty good in low light too. It was nice to come back to film for a bit and to use this jewel-like OM2 with its big bright optical finder. I used two rolls of Ilford FP4 that expired in 2009, so I wasn't entirely sure what kind of results, if any, I'd actually get. It seemed to work pretty well though, although some of the images are quite a bit more grainy than I expected, especially from such a slow film, so perhaps that's a result of it being long past its sell-by date. In theory, a lens that makes good colour images should also make good black and white images, and that's probably generally true. Having said that though, I do think that certain lenses lend themselves to black and white images better than others, and I think this is one of them. It's a bit soft wide open, but that can often look quite nice on film. Film has a very different look to digital. There's a little less resolution and detail, more of a handmade feel and, at least on this roll, a few more flaws too. Some of these images attracted dust at the scanning stage, but I didn't retouch them because I quite like them as they are, imperfections and all, happy accidents that just seem to add something that would be lost if I cleaned them up. Images shot on black and white film, to me, have an organic feel. This is stripped down photography, photography in its purest and simplest form. Colour images look more like the world we see around us, whereas black and white images are one step removed from that. They communicate differently, on a deeper and more intuitive level, and the Zuiko 50mm 1.4 is a great lens to make them with. The next lens I used has a very different character. The Zuiko 100mm f2.8 is a sharp lens, it's sharper than the 50mm, but with less contrast. It's a small lens and it sits very nicely on the OM2. It's a very useful focal length too, with plenty of reach. It can make loads of background blur, even at longish distances, and it makes some lovely images on film. The low contrast look has a rather old school feel, and it reminds me a little bit of old family photographs shot in the 50s and 60s. It has a very soft and gentle, almost otherworldly look, and the nature of film images adds to and complements that look. Film is softer, it's less clean, less perfect than digital images are. It suits the notion of photography as an art form and images are less precise, less sharp, less perfect, a little bit more like a sketch or a painting, as though we're looking through a window into another world. I must admit, I think I prefer this lens to the 50mm for film work. It's a bit sharper fully open and its lower contrast seems to suit the medium. These are gentle images that don't leap out at you. They're relaxed, dreamy and low-key. Just lovely. Background blur from this lens is lovely too. It's very soft and gentle, and it complements the low-contrast nature of the lens. 
it's not always possible to shoot wide open, of course, and you may not always want to, but using a slow film of ASA 100 or so gives you the best chance to do that. Shooting on digital will give you a slightly different look to film. It's cleaner and clearer, with a smoother feel and slightly higher resolution too, but the general principles and approaches are of course the same. The Jupiter 9 85mm f2 is a Russian sonar-derived lens that, I think, works particularly well for shooting black and white. It gives strong blacks, delicate whites, and shades of grey have a silvery quality that helps to bring the images alive. It's a fairly low contrast lens and it makes lovely black and white images that have quite an old school feel. Of course, shooting digitally you can manipulate the image in camera and it's not as passive a process as shooting on film. Brightness, contrast and sharpness can be adjusted and there's usually a high contrast black and white preset you can use too, so there's much more flexibility at the shooting stage, although these images were all shot with brightness, contrast and sharpness set to zero. The Jupiter 9 is fairly sharp, although it's not the sharpest vintage lens I've shot with. In my view, that's a good thing. It's sharp enough, and personally, I like that slight softness very much. It's a retro sort of look that I think works particularly well in black and white. It doesn't reproduce the look of film, of course, but there's something of a filmy quality about it. It's a lovely lens to use. Its 85mm focal length gives it a little reach, and its f2 maximum aperture means it's pretty good in low light and it'll give you some nice background blur too. There's a richness and a fullness to the black and white images from this lens and a certain something that few others I've used are able to match. And at around 100 to 120 pounds for a good one, I think it's currently a bit of a bargain. If you want a real old school look to your black and white shots, you're going to need a real old school lens, and they don't get much more old school than this. The first uncoated version of the Ukrainian Fed 10. This one's from 1938, and I suspect it's more or less a direct copy of the Light Selmar, but whatever the case, it's a lovely little lens with an authentic vintage look. It's probably the lowest contrast lens I have, and because it has no coatings at all, if there's any source of light in the frame, what contrast it has will fall away dramatically. There wasn't much colour film around in the 1930s, so this is a lens designed for black and white, and even on a digital body it gives an image that could be straight out of the 30s. Low contrast, slightly soft, and very delicate shades of black, white and grey. It's not particularly sharp, but I think that adds to the retro aesthetic, as does the minimum focus distance of 3 feet, or 1 metre. At f3.5 maximum aperture, it's not a fast lens either, so it won't give you much background blur, but again, I think that adds to the aesthetic. It's not a lens I use all the time, or even very much, but it does get used sometimes, and if you want that authentic 1930s look straight out of camera, there are few better ways of achieving it than this. A good copy will cost anywhere from 30 to 50 pounds or so, and they're very easy to service, so if it needs cleaning and lubricating, it's really not difficult to do. A lovely little piece of kit, and in my opinion, a bit of an unsung treasure. So, there we are. Four great little lenses that will create some fantastic black and white images on film if you want to go old school, or on digital if you want it simple and fuss free. So, that's it from me for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the bell before you go, and if you like this channel and you want to support it, you can do so at 
patreon.com forward slash xenography. As ever, thanks for watching and I will see you next time for some more xenography.